Here's where we left off on the last video. I'm going to take the part out of the chuck here and go saw it off of the, the stock and the, the extra stock on the back of the part. So the saws are behind my machine, so I'm walking around the back here. So the cutoff saw. I'm going to cut off that uh, drop of material on the back end of the part after I uh, clear this table of the saw off. They left a bunch of junk on the table. This hem saw is the saw that I purchased when I owned the shop. It's not a bad saw. I kind of like it. Although somebody's got it all out of whack on the adjustments for the down feed or something. It's kind of a little bit trickier to use than it used to be. I don't know, they, they redid the air cylinders or something and it's kind of a little tricky. You can feed it too fast into the stock if you're not careful. It's just a time lapse of the cutting. It didn't happen that fast really. I'm going to deburr the part on the belt sander. Come back over to the machine and put it... Well, I'm going to change the chuck jaws on the chuck and then uh, um, chuck onto the part. If you kind of look carefully, you'll see that I just used a piece of strapping when I chucked onto the part. So I'm only actually chucking... You can see it there as the chuck rotates. See that piece of strapping material? So I'm only really chucked on to about, maybe that's about an inch and a quarter wide, that strap, so that I can tap the part around it and get it running through on the face first, the back face that's been machined, and then uh, then get it running through on the OD by adjusting the jaws. I, I didn't show that, but that's what I did, of course. And then uh, check the X and Y zero to make sure that it's, on center line. Kind of adjust it a little bit, about a thousandth of an inch in the X axis. The Y was running pretty good. And this can vary a little bit depending on the temperature the machine's at. This was the beginning of the day when I was doing this, so it's, the machine's cold. It can vary a little. So we have to get the X and Y center line first before we indicate the C axis rotation with that notch that I milled in the first operation on this part. And that's the reason I did it so that I could line up on whatever's already in the part by doing this. So you just kind of got to work this back and forth until you get it where you want it. The, on the Mazak, the, the rotary axis can, can um, be jogged at one one thousandth of a degree. No, it's one, one ten thousandth of a degree, actually, which is a very fine. I, I don't know how they get that resolution on their rotary axis, but it's, it's ten times more resolution than a normal rotary axis, like a, on a Haas or something, is a thousandth of a degree. This is one ten thousandth of a degree it can be jaw very precisely. So we get this lined up for and then set the C zero there. And then I'm gonna set the, the Z zero on my fixture offset on the back of the part because it's already machined and I wanna leave a ha I wanna make this a half an inch thick on this flange. So I set that at minus a half an inch back there on the back by using this one, two, three block and just pushing it up against the back there while I jog it in on this uh, on the hammer indicator. And on the Maze Act, it's it's just a simple you just teach it. Okay, somebody saying bye to me. You just teach it a uh, um, half an inch deep there and it'll, it'll automatically calculate the zero in front.
Here's the first turning tool. This is the turning tool I should have probably used on the last program, or the last video, I should say, to avoid hitting the jaws. But I don't have two tools like this, and I want to run a rough. But I think my surface footage is a little bit too high there. In fact, when I did this finish pass on the, the front, I didn't like the finish because the insert had, it either chipped the insert on that notch on the OD or it just wore it out for too high surface footage, so I indexed it and took another pass on it. You can, you can see it's cutting a little bit off. But I re-ran that, that finished face just to get a little better finish. This side of the fixture, nothing is really super critical. So it really doesn't matter. I, I could have left it that way, but I just wanted to see it a little nicer finish. This is a spot drill for the... These are the two quarter inch holes, or the uh, holes for the quarter inch screws that hold it on to the split clamp that clamps around the OD of the part. So I didn't have the right size drill here in the machine. This needs to be a clearance hole for a quarter inch screw, so it's a 265 thousandths drill. Just drill through. And then uh, come in with a quarter inch end mill after this to do the... Um, there's a, a slot milled in the face just to indicate on so that I can line up on this when it's um, in the part. The key on the other end of the fixture lines up in the key of the bore of the part but then I want to make sure I'm lined up to this fixture to set my C0 the camera was too close to the part to hit the part and so that's just a slot to run an indicator and set Z, I mean a C0 and then mill the counterbores for the screw heads here So here, this is a half inch fork root end mill, but I have to stick it out a little further out of the collet chuck, and you'll see the reason why a little bit further on in the video here. And sticking out, of the, um, it might have made it with that, it's sticking out about an inch and a little over an inch and a quarter, I think it was, but it, but I was a little bit worried that might not be enough, so I stuck it out about an inch and five eighths. And like I say, you'll see why in a little bit here. There's just a uh, pocket in the face of this part that, that intersects those holes for the drills. And here is the reason I stuck it out further because I'm going to be angling this. I put a chamfer on this pocket and I didn't want to hit that nut of the collet chuck on the face. You'll see in a minute here. And I was also checking my clearances, paying a little bit more attention. I don't want to hit the chuck jaws. So this is just a um, wrapped, well it's not really a wrap, it's a face, what do they call this on the um, software, they call it a, I gotta look here, I can't remember, rotary face pocketing they call it, which it interpolates the C axis, it, it leaves the, um, the Y always stays on zero on this kind of milling on the center line of the spindle and it moves the C and the X axis to mill the shape and then the Z goes in of course. So those are those holes that I drilled on the previous operation on this fixture and this pocket breaks into the hole so that we can get the drill in the holes of course. So the next part of the video is going to you're going to be seeing these a five axis move to mill that 45 degree angle on the um, outside wall of the pocket here. It's going to be this here. And that's the reason I, I stuck the end mill further out in the collet chuck. Didn't want that nut to hit the part. Just wanted to be sure I had enough clearance. So this is a, um, it's not really a full five axis move per se because the b-axis stays pretty much at a 45 degree it moves a little bit so it is really a five axis move 
but it doesn't move very much on the B-axis. So I, I re-ran this, a little better finish on it, because I was only taking this in one cut. And I also wanted to get a little bit of closer view so you can see what was happening. spot drill or the, the chamfer of these holes. So that pretty much finishes that part of the fixture. And then the next part of this video is going to be on um, making the, this split clamp that actually is going to hold this into the part because we're going to be running high pressure through the spindle coolant and it would blow it out of the bore the coolant pressure would if you didn't have it physically held in there there's no feature on the face of the part that i can use like a, a hole a threaded hole or something you have to have a, a ring that clamps around the part which i call the split ring clamp as you see there, and, it, and it'll um, hold that thing into the bore. So this is a piece of heavy wall pipe I found around the shop here. And I uh, indicated this in on the, in the forge I chuck and stuck it out as far as I could and still have a hold on. I'm holding on to about an inch of the stock, but that's pretty good on the, those serrated jaws. That won't move. So this is the finish of the uh, face and OD tool. And nothing is really super critical about this part either. It just has to clamp around the, the um, OD of the part. The only thing that's sort of critical might be the bore. It has to fit the part. That has to be more or less the same diameter as the fixture I just made. A rough boring bar. The only thing here is it helps to run the spindle in the right direction. The left hand tool and I run the spindle like it's a right hand tool. It cuts better when you run it the right direction. We got the finished ID boring bar. Very good chip control on that insert. I want a little bit of clearance on the OD of the parts. The parts are four and three quarters. I'm going to machine this to 4.755. And I've kind of redesigned this from the previous video I showed the model. And I'm just going to put notches in the side of this instead of trying to mill the counterbores, these deep counterbores for the screw heads. So I thought about it, and, and it would, this gives me more clearance for the Allen wrench and everything to tighten the screws to. So this is just milling these notches in the side. I'm going to put spot faces on, on the face there for the heads of the screw. Because I'm leaving about a 3 8 radius in the corner there, and the screw head would hit it. Half inch, five fluid, end mill, two inch cut line. The spot drill for the two holes, the tap holes that are going to hold the fixture in. Quarter 20s is what they're going to be. And then I didn't have a, a saw big enough in diameter to cut these um, 
slot or the split. This is splitting the two rings in half here. And so I, I um, decided I was going to try this. I've never done this before with a party tool. And um, it's not the most efficient way to do this, but it did work. It's only about two inches deep with that party tool. And um, it didn't leave a real nice finish in, in the slots when I broke the parts off the stock, I noticed, but it got the job done. It saved me having to buy a, um, I mean, at least a six inch diameter slitting saw for ropes. The, the parting tool is 120 thousandths wide. And it, it took a little bit of time to do it that way. I wouldn't say that's the best way to do it, but it worked. Putting the spot faces for the the these are also going to be quarter twenty screws that clamp this together. So it's running a, that's kind of a long end now. I'm running it kind of slow here. I'm going to sped up of course the video is quite a bit. The whole video, most all this whole video is sped up at least about five times faster than normal, except in just certain areas. Like the beginning of that little, that parting tool was run at actual speed, the very beginning when there was no coolant running on it. That was the actual speed. The spot drill. Three-eighths by 90 degrees carbide spot drill. And here's the tap drill for a quarter 20 thread of 203,000 diameter. Gotta run it down the sides there too. I found out something with this um, air knife thing on the camera. If I if I squirt some of the um, Rain-X in the little air line, it kind of gets clearer. It, it, you'll notice that it when it starts to fog up a little bit, and I squirt some of that Rain-X in there, it clears it up. And I think that maybe uh, if I could mist in some Rain-X in the air supply, it would the, the the air knife on the lens would work a lot better. This is a 265 clearance hole for the quarter inch screws, just down to the slitted slot. I'm gonna come in with the quarter 20 tap. I'm just starting the tap here. I don't wanna take the chance of breaking it or anything, so I'm just running it a little ways in to get a start so that when I tap it by hand, everything's going square to the... Here's this thing with my machine, I can't I'll have the doors open and put oil on taps or anything so it's kind of a, a pain you have to open and close the door and then all the oil runs off and, but anyway I'm not driving the tap hardly any into there just maybe about three-eighths of an inch from the tip of the tap in so that it won't take a chance of breaking the tap this is the way I decided to part it off the, the tube with this circular cutter uh, saw. This is an Iskar saw. It's 156 thousandths wide inserts. I could have probably run the parting tool in there, but I was a little bit afraid of doing that because there'd be intersecting slots and stuff, and I, I didn't have a lot of confidence that that would be good. I had to kind of hammer that file in there to get it started, because I was intending to break these off, but it was just a little bit more than I could break it off with that pry bar. So once I started breaking it, it came off easy enough. You just had to get it kind of started by, by hammering that, that file, I should say, in there enough to start the break. 
here I'm just deburring the parts with the uh, NSK grinder. That's that carbide insert is slitting, so I didn't leave a real nice finish on the back there, but it, it doesn't matter because it's not really doing anything as to the function of the part. If you look carefully, you can kind of see when I get the grinder out, you know, I grind off those faces. You can see the the finish wasn't real nice that that parting tool left shaping. You can kind of see it if you look carefully there. So, I don't know, that that would probably work better in different kinds of materials than this. Steel. You can't, the machine can't really move fast enough because it, it can't accelerate, decelerate and accelerate back and forth when it's doing that shaping thing to get a high enough surface footage. It would, it would probably work better in stuff like stainless steel or aluminum or something. And this steel, it just can't get moving fast enough. I had programmed about 500 inches a minute on the, the cycle, but it never got up to that. It only got to about 350 according to the display on the control. So I'm just hitting the parts a little bit here and making them look a little bit nicer. You gotta tap the holes to depth. I didn't show every single hole here, I just showed a few of them. You get the idea. Two holes in the face on each part, one hole on each part. And that's about it for this fixture finally. And now we can actually start on the setup piece and actually do all this stuff that I'm making these things for. So the next um, video hopefully will be on actually shaping this bore keyway and everything in here and then drilling these holes that this fixture is designed for.